I think he's a he. This this chapter makes it seem like he's a pedo creeper, not just a creeper. Oh, okay. Because like if he were like if he were like scoping out like you know like the the college beach bunnies, sure. Then just creeper at his age. Beach bunnies are those what you call the drunk teenagers at spring break. Yeah, it's beach bunnies. Warning, the following show will spoil the hell out of George R.R. Martin's A Song of Ice and Fire books and the TV show A Game of Thrones. Also, you're probably going to find a fuck ton of bad language. The explicit tag is there for a reason. Death and boobies, 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 death and boobies. Did never that? heard that term? No, oh. I've never heard that term. Alrighty then. Well, yes, that's what you call them. But we need to jump into this shit. Instead of just talking off the record. Yeah. Because that's going to be the cold intro. So I'm opening. Yes. Okay. Hello and welcome back to the Ironwood Network Book Club. I'm your host, Septa Ironwood. And with me, as always, is Maester Ironwood and Brave Brave Sir Micah. <laughs> Brave Brave Sir Micah, who is going to get himself removed from the office again. once again. <laughs> as he tries to interrupt the show. Yes. <sighs> Come on. You gotta leave now. You broke the rule. Come on. All right. So yeah. So, brave, brave. So Micah has been removed. Yeah, unfortunately. All right, Septa. What are we here talking about today? Um, the Prince of Dorne. No. Um, it is the Captain of the Guard. The Captain of the Guard. Yes, Ario Hota. Mm-hmm. So, all right. Before we get into a synopsis of a chapter that really doesn't have a whole lot to do with the Captain of the Guard, and is really giving us a character around the Prince of Dorne. Yes. This is the whole point of this one. It's, it's similar to Cat in Rob's Right. The whole point chapters. of Cat was to get it near Rob, exactly. Yeah. Yep. Without having it from Rob's POV. Yes. All right. <clears throat> so here is the... Uh, this, the uh, haiku? The haiku for the Captain of the Guard. Sand snakes every all over creep Doran. Is he a pedo? Mm. We'll answer that question later. We'll answer that question later, yeah. We talked about it in the cold opening, but we'll get to it in more depth. Yes. Later on. All right. So, synopsis of this chapter. Uh, Ario Hota is the captain of the house guard for the Martells. Yes. And he is the personal, I would guess, like, sworn shield, it would seem, to Prince Doran. Yes. They are currently spending time at the Water Gardens. Which is it seems kind of like a like a royal escape from the city. Yeah, and, it's a beachfront. Yeah, it's a villa. So um, they've been there for about two years as Prince Doran's um, gout has gotten bad enough that he can't walk and he doesn't want the people to see him in that condition. So he's been just kind of hiding out in the water gardens. Yes. Um... This is the day when they receive word via Raven that uh, Prince Oberyn is dead. Yep. And so Prince Doran is visited by three ghosts, um, three daughters <laughs> of the Red Viper. Uh, his eldest, his eldest Sand Snakes, mm -hmm. Obara, Nymeria, and Tyene. Mm-hmm. And they, in their own ways, are attempting to get him to go to war with the Tyrells and the Lannisters yes. over the death of their father, Prince yes. Oberyn. Um, Doran has different ideas and doesn't really see it as murder because, as he says, his dumbass brother got himself involved in a trial by combat he had no business being involved in. And so if you die in trial by combat, that's not murder. Which is true, it's not. Yes, I did. I do agree with that. Yep. Although uh, we'll also get into talking about he knows his brother's hot headed and knows that his brother would do dumb shit like get himself involved in shit that he doesn't belong in. So why send him there in the first place? Yeah, we will get into that. Absolutely. We will also get into a potential identity of somebody that we met in the prologue as uh, one of. Oberyn's younger Sand Snakes is not in Dorne currently, we find out. Yep. And she's off playing games somewhere. In Old Town? So we'll see where that, what's it, what that's all about. Yeah. All right. That's basically what happens. He returns to the city, and uh, at the very end, he tells Arya Hotel that he wants 
all of the sand snakes that can be rounded up, rounded up, and put under guard for their protection, quote unquote. In other words, to keep them. Oh, and don't forget to tell uh, uh, Lord Lannister that um, he has friends here in Dorne. Yeah. Fuck you. But does he really? Well, we'll see. I don't think that you you have to get later on as we get more from Prince Doran, but I don't think he's really into Tywin Lannister. I think he's playing the long game. I mean, a seventeen year long game so far. Right. Yeah. So we'll see what happens, but uh, yeah. And so that's where we end up is the uh, the uh, orders to go out and Kidnap. protect the Sand Snakes from themselves. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that last sentence really pissed me off. Mm, yeah. All right. Septa, let's get started. Yes. All right, so let's talk about creepy-ass Doran. He this is, is where I want to start. Wheelchair bound. Because of gout. Yeah, horrible gout. It's yeah. not like one... Le- it's like all of his joints have right. gout. And so, well, and so you think about like... You think about like modern medicine, like pretty much anybody with gout would probably have that if we didn't have like the modern mm-hmm. antibiotics and shit that we have today to keep that inflammation and whatnot down. Yeah. So, so he basically has elephantitis in his legs. Yeah. His and at knees, least one leg. Yeah. I mean, ones they said is like the size of like a citrus fruit, but pure red. Yeah. The other one's like the size of a melon, yep. but pure red. Yes. And his toes look like Ugh. big purple grapes ready to burst. Yeah. yeah. Doesn't and on top of that, he's also surrounded by overripe fruit in the garden. Everywhere. So I can't, I can't tell if that's like some kind of symbolism. Yeah. So, yeah, we get we get that uh, several times throughout the chapter. A, uh, a blood orange overripens, falls from the tree, and splashes on the ground. Yeah. We get that several times. Mm-hmm. Now, I can imagine the smell. I it's gotta love, smell so good, just the smell of citrus. Yeah, it's like, I love it's not like citrus. Mr. Clean all over yeah. the place. Yeah. It's just like a big giant Mr. Clean area. But did you mention did you notice the other fruit that they mentioned? Which one was that? Lemons. Yes. Okay. Yep. Lemons and blood oranges. Yes. Citrus. Yes. And we have questions about where lemons can grow. So Yes. Uh, so if you look at the places that we're at, so um, Dorn is would be akin to like a Mediterranean climate, it seems like. Yes. Southern Spain, Southern Italy, yep. Southern Greece. Whereas we're also supposed to believe somehow that citrus is growing in what would basically be like London. Right, yeah. In uh, Bravos. It rains too much there. <laughs> rains and fog all the time. Yeah. So I, I don't think we're growing citrus there. But no. we're obviously growing citrus here in Dorn. Yes. And we don't talk about it. And here's the interesting thing, right? We don't really, like, the lemons don't play a part in the chapter. No. The blood oranges do. We just get the one mention to make sure that we know that lemons grow there. Yes. And then we just move on to blood oranges and we're on blood oranges the rest of the time. Yes. We just get that one quick mention about lemons and then we're done with those. Yes. Which is interesting. Yeah. That George would just bring that up real quick, but then never really highlight it or use it for anything. It's just, oh, yeah, lemons grow here, by the way, but what about those blood oranges? Oh, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, like, I'm, I was, like, half tempted to be, like, oh, where's the red door? So, like, yeah, exactly. You know, like, yeah, like, the door to the water gardens is, like, a red door or something. Right. You know. Maybe Daenerys was one of those kids playing in the water when she was younger. I mean, it's entirely possible. Right. I don't see why not. Right. So, I mean, it's a courtyard with citrus trees in it. Yeah. That's not really, lemons, but it's citrus. Fruit. Well, there's lemons in there. Because they mentioned the lemons. So, there are lemons in there. We just talk about the, the, blood, the blood oranges, oranges the whole time. But... So it, it wouldn't be that big of a stretch to think that maybe this courtyard is where Daenerys did play, and that's why she remembers a courtyard with citrus. Mm-hmm. Who knows? I mean, we'll see, hopefully. Right. We'll learn more. I, I'm i fairly convinced that she was raised in Dorne before heading off to Essos. Agreed. Because... While she was really young, before right. she was which safely would, able to move. Right, which, I mean, would make sense, right? Because, like... The Dorn, Dornish, the Dornish family, the Martells, were married into the Targaryens, and Ilya and her children were murdered right. by Tywin's men when they when they took the city. Yes, during the rebellion. So it would make sense that they would outwardly, of course, be friendly to the new king of the realm, but yep. harbor some very deep, disturbing uh, hatred for them, and even protect. Yeah. You know, the children that 
you know, could at least bring that dynasty back at some point. Well, you know, them. if they are playing the long game, that would make sense. Yeah, which Doran almost certainly is. Yeah. As we get more and more from his perspective later on, it's almost certain he's playing over. And he even tells them that in this chapter. He's like, like my brother would go to war. He's foolish. Like, he would rush into things. Mm-hmm. I don't rush into things. Yeah, and that's when one of the Sand Snakes is like, yeah, it's been 17 years. He's like, yeah, I'm well aware. I know exactly how long it's been. I haven't lost count. I know exactly what's going on. I know the score. So he he seems like a very cunning man. Yes, even if he is physically unable to. Right. His mind seems as sharp as ever. Yes. So he seems like a, a dangerous opponent. Yes. So. Him and Tyrion would have some interesting conversation. It would be interesting, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Over a game of Cybass or something. What's Cybass? It's like Westerosi or SOC chess. Oh, that'd be fun. Mm. Maybe we can buy a Cybass board. I don't know. <laughs> that'd be kind of cool if we could. I like chess. We I like, like chess. chess. Try our hands at Cybass instead. That'd be interesting. I wonder if there's actual rules to the game that George has made. <laughs> that'd be cool. That'd be, that'd be interesting. All right. So the one last thing I really want to touch on in Dorn is creeper part. Okay. So you say creeper, but not pedophile. He's creepy Uncle Joe. Again, you say creeper, but not pedophile. I mean, let's not forget Uncle Joe there running for president was talking about how when he used to get in the pool, oh, yeah. the boys would come up to him and rub their hands on his legs. Like, uh, yeah, exactly. Creepy Uncle Joe. That's, uh, I never, <laughs> I never heard that one. Yeah. Never heard that one. Yeah. He was, he was giving some speech and talking about how when he would get in the pool, the kids would come up and rub their hands up and down his legs. Yeah. You know how Joe just runs at the fucking diarrhea of the mouth. Ugh. Yeah, so I say pedophile. I like it very well. It very clearly mentions that he's watching the children day after day after day, every day, all day. He just sits there and watches the children. Yes. Like he's not like watching like you know like the grown women like just like a normal creeper be like scoping out all the like the grown women right. working on their no tan line tans. Right. But he's very specifically watching the children. Right. Swimming and laying on the ground naked to work on their tans. And well, the thing is, is in Dorne, the children run around naked, apparently. Especially at the gardens. Right, because they're just playing in the water. Yeah. But like I said, there's a beach right there. Yeah. Because he's watching kids at the beach, too. But, like, I would be watching the grown women on the beach. Yes, you would. I probably would be, too. Exactly. <laughs> exactly, because we're normal creepers. Yes. He seems very much like a pedophile creeper. Well, it also doesn't mention that there's, like, any other adults around keeping an eye on the children. But again, like, these are, like, prominent, important children. Yes. We learn. Yes. Do you really think that it is left up to the Prince of Dorne to, to babysit the kids? No. So. I don't know. Uh, I lean towards Creeper. Okay. I don't know if you do. I mean, you lean towards creeper. I t- I lean towards pedo creeper with okay. this guy, just simply because it's we're very clear about. He just spends all day every day watching these kids frolic around naked and play in the water. Okay. So, yeah, that's that's a little creepy. <laughs> I didn't think too hard on it. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Okay. All right. So now that we're done with with that part, we can talk about the things that are happening. Yeah. So, uh, he has recently received word that his brother's dead. Yep. And the first thing of note that really happens is we get a visit from Obara, who is the eldest of Oberyn's daughters. Yes. The first Sand Snake. She's about 30. From what it sounds like, she's kind of like a curvy girl. Yep. She's, she looks more like her quote-unquote horror of a mother than she does her father. Right. But she has his eyes and his hair. Yes. They all have his eyes. Yeah. No matter what color they are. They all have serpent's eyes. Yeah. Now, I do love the one thing as we're in Ario Hota's mind um, talking about her overriding her horse and how um, she And her men. Right. And she she told him once that she could tame any horse in Dorne and any man by the way as well. Yeah. In Dorne. So... She obviously gets around. And we'll talk about one of his other daughter one of the other daughters later and what she says she was doing when she got news of her father's yeah. death. Well, they're very much like their father in that aspect. They enjoy the the, the uh, finer things in life. The op- the uh, the openness of Dornish life, apparently. Yes. So um yeah, so she is uh she comes 
And Ario Hota decides not to let her through to see. That was Doran his orders. Because Dora needs private time while watching the children play in the fountains and the <laughs> pools. And can't be disturbed. So we'll just leave that hanging there as to what that could possibly mean. <laughs> I, I didn't read it as that. You know, you know, I have no energy worth pedophiles. <laughs> I know. Yeah. You know that. No fucks to give. Um, but reading that, I did not see that. Mm. I just saw it as, you know, this guy likes to be left alone. And, you know, like you said, <coughs> his mind is as sharp as ever. So he's probably thinking about what he can do to avenge his dead brother. And he doesn't like people ta- snipping in his ears, That's especially... It? Oberyn's daughters, because he right. knows they're going to be coming. Right, he can't treat them like shit, because they're right. family. And down in Dorne, like, bastards aren't treated like they're treated in the north. Right. They're treated like normal members of the family. Right, even though they won't ascend. They can't inherit anything, right, yeah. but they're treated They're treated with the same status, as far as socially, as right. a true-born daughter of right. the Martell family. Absolutely. So, yep. So, uh, she comes up, and she wants... She is like the, uh, she wants to go straight to war. She basically yeah. wants to grab the armies and go, or the sounds of it, go attack Highgarden. Old Town. Oh, that's right. She wants to do Old Town, which Highgarden will be on. Which the I want to know why Old Town. Old Town didn't have a part to play that we know of. So why Old Town? Well, that's an interesting question, considering that we do possibly have a, a potential Sand Snake alert in Old Town. Right. Well, she says, regardless of what my sister likes about Old Town. Yes. Yeah, or no, to... that's the other sister that said it. Yeah. But um, why Old Town? Yeah, they want to go burn it to ashes. She wants to go burn it. Obara wants to burn, burn it. it to why ashes. does Obara want to burn down Old Town? Because so her I father's th- death. So I it- think for her, it's to get rid of the place where she right the place where she comes from. Because remember, her mother was an Old Town whore. Right, but that's got nothing to do with her father's death. Has nothing to do with the Lannisters. Has very, very little to do with the Martells. Or with the Tyrells. Right. So... Well, except that Old Town is under Highgarden. Oh, okay. Well, that would make sense if, you know, whatever their taxes and stuff go to the Tyrells. That would make sense. But it doesn't make sense to attack a town that had nothing to do with... It would if you're trying to... So, for instance, a lot of the money that the realm relies on comes through Old Town. Right. So if you can cripple that, then that's a that's a devastating blow to their war effort. That makes sense. However, on the humanity side, it doesn't make sense to... Dis- Does she seem like she's concerned no. at all with the humanity no, side? No, she is concerned with vengeance and mm-hmm. vengeance alone. Yes. So... Plus, maybe there's, I mean, maybe there's something to do with Old Town that, you know, I think a, I think some of it has to do with the fact that she harbors resentment towards her mother. Her mother drank herself to death a year right. after uh, so over in So I think for her. her, wiping Old Town off the map would be kind of like wiping away a part of her past that she doesn't want to have to deal with. Well, she already can choose not to deal with it. Well, yeah, but that's different than just completely getting rid of it. Like, if Old Town's right. not there... Then it's not there. Right. You know what I mean? So I think that also has parts to do with it. Okay. Because when she was young, she chose to go with Oprah. She remember. did. She picked up the spear. Right. Exactly. So yeah. she didn't even want to be. Right. So her wanting to wipe it out doesn't surprise me. Right. Okay, it's a little. So it's a little excessive. Let's be honest, but it's not really shocking. Um. Anyway, uh, Doran kind of gives her the yeah. I'll, I'll consider it and I'll move along. Yeah. Basically. Is, yeah. is what she gets. Yeah. And so then she's on her way. Pissed. Yep. Yep. And she's headed back to Sunspear, and she's going to tell everybody that Doran's not doing his job and get the, the folks all riled up about him not giving a shit about his brother dying and their their prince dying. Well, she uh, does do that. She does indeed. <laughs> um, so uh, Doran tells Arya Hota, okay, look, she's going to go, like, I have to go back to the castle now, mm-hmm. to the city, because I have to be out in front of this whole nonsense yes. that she's going to try to stir up. Mm-hmm. Her and her sisters are going to try to stir up. Yeah. So uh, make the make the the convoy ready for tomorrow morning. Yeah. I'm going to have to head out, and it's like a three league journey. Yeah. 
back to Sunspear. Yeah. But it takes all day because yes. they have to go slow because the smallest bump along the way hurts them. Hurts like like you can tell it really hurts them. Yeah. So, um, so the next morning they do. We get a little bit into not. Ex- it's about noon before right. they leave. But uh, we get a little bit into Ario Hota ahead of time where uh, he sleeps with his axe. Yeah, because that's his wife. Yep, sleeps naked with his axe. Very weird. But That's what he was taught to do. Yeah, well, he, yeah, no. he, he was a slave soldier. He quote unquote married his ex when he was 16. Yep. He got the brand. He can't take any other wife. Yep. Very similar to the Night's Watch. And the Kingsguard. Yes. As he mentions, he's not looking forward to the day, which is probably coming very soon, where he's going to have to kill Ari Sokart. Yeah, because he's a king. Yes, he's the one down there with Marcella. Mm-hmm. And so he's not looking forward to the day when he has to kill Ari Sokart because he kind of feels like a little bit of a kinship with him. Yeah. Because of the vows that each of them had to take. Yes. But so, yeah, so they make, they're on their way. Um, about halfway into the trip, second Sand Snake appears. Which is the second daughter. Nymeria, who they call Nim. Yeah, little Nim. Yep. The secret of Nim. Yep. <laughs> and she's a gorgeous girl. Yep. Um, her mother is highborn Valerian. Yes. Not Valerian. Um, one of the free cities. Valeria, I thought it was. I don't think it's Valeria. Valeria didn't exist at that time. Valeria has been gone for hundreds of years. All right. So let me. It's one of the free cities. Volantis. Yeah. There you Start go. with a V. Volan- Volantisi. Whatever. But yeah. So from Volantis, she looks a lot more like Oberyn. She's thin. Yep. You know, muscular. Yeah. Looks like she could do some damage in battle. Yeah. But yeah. Also rides her horse very well. Yes. And so she shows up in basically the middle of the desert. Yep. With like 12 guards. Yes. And uh, talks to Doran again. This time she talks to him. Yeah. And she has a different plan. Yes. For basically the same thing. She yep. also wants to go to war. But she wants four deaths and only four. Yeah. She wants Jamie and Cersei's. Yep. To compensate for Elia's yep. kids. Lord Tywin's. Yep. For the Red Vipers. Yep. And the Little King, because... Tommen. Yeah, because, uh, I don't know. For Oberyn. For, no, that was Ty, Lord Tyrell. Or Lord um, Tywin. She wanted Tywin's oh, then, head then for... Oh, then as a, pri- as, a yeah. pe- as a penance. Yeah. But yeah, she also wants to kill Tommen. Yeah. She also wants to... Yes. Yes. Um, queen Marcella. Yep. Name her queen since, according to Dornish law... Yes. A, the eldest child, regardless of gender, is the one who inherits the titles. And from what she says, I believe uh, the Red Viper himself put this idea in her head. So he must have been talking about this before he even left, because it was mentioned to Tyrion right. as well. Mm-hmm. Yes. So it would make sense that they would go to war if, by Dornish law, they married... Um, Marcella to one of their own and then right. crowned her as Queen of the Andals mm-hmm. and the Seven Kingdoms. Right. And that itself would start its own war. Correct. And Doran says that she goes, you know, by Dornish law, uh, you know, a, a, a female can inherit. Yes. And he says, yes, by Dornish law. And she says, well, according to the treaty we signed with, you know, the realm. Dornish law still applies in because Dorn, and he says yes in Dorn, and she says Marcella is in Dorn. Yes. So therefore, at this time, she has every right to inherit, which makes perfect sense. Now, here's a question to think about. Yes. What would Cersei do? Right, because we know that Cersei wants power. She feels yes like betrayed that she was never able to have it because she was a female, even though she's yes. technically Tywin's eldest. Now, I think we did talk would about this in the last she, book. Would she support Marcella or would she support Tommen? What do you think? I think she she throw a fit first. She would absolutely, absolutely throw, throw a fit. fit because now she's stuck between a rock and a hard place. Mm-hmm. Because right now she, in King's Landing, she's fighting for Tommen to be king, and then over here in Dorne, her daughter's getting everything she ever wanted for her daughter. Right, and so and she doesn't she know support who, her daughter. Yes, who right because. Because if she makes the argument that her daughter can't be the queen, then she's basically saying that everything she's ever fought for her entire life was pointless exactly. because it wouldn't have made any difference. Exactly. 
So yeah, that that move right there is kind of like a double fuck you checkmate. Yes. Like, what do you do if you're the queen regent? At you that just point? cut your head off. Cut your own head <laughs> off, and then let your kids fight it you out. Go become a silent sister yes. or something. <laughs> because I can see that making Cersei go mad. Right, trying to figure out what yeah. to do. Yeah. Yeah. Because like, okay, well, I mean, I can, but and, and then at that point, it's like, well, fine, we're going to war against Dorne, but. That means we're going to fight against Marcella. That means Tommen's going to war against Marcella. Yes. And you have to think that she would have this affinity for wanting Marcella to be queen. Yes. For as much as she always wanted to be the one who inherits Casterly Rock. Right. But so far she's been behind Tommen 100%. And right. Because that's the only choice. Yeah. Except that the Dornish are now considering at least offering a separate choice, a different choice. Right. Which plays on Cersei's heartstrings. Yes, absolutely. And her desires for women to be able to have power. Right. So. And then who does she choose? Her oldest daughter or her youngest son? Right. Yeah. Yeah. So it's an interesting gambit. Yeah. So we'll have to see if that ever pans out, if they ever try to do that. It'd be interesting to see. That would be nice. Yeah. Like I said, Dorne is a lot more interesting in the books. Yeah. Than it was in the TV Absolutely. show. Absolutely. Because I don't think that part was ever played no. in the TV show. No. They just killed Marcella. Who, who, by the way, is still alive in the books. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. She, Good. She hasn't been murdered. <laughs> so, yeah. I was worried she was going to die here shortly. Because no. Marcella is innocent. Hilarious. As much as no. she is a abomination of incest, right. as they like to say. She still it seems much, sweet. She's still a good kid. She's not, she's not the bad... She seems, to have gotten more ja- she seems to have gotten more Jamie than Cersei. Yeah. Absolutely. So, yeah. But yeah, so that's the second Sans Nigga. And again, Doran's just kind of like, oh, I'll think about it. Bye-bye. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, like, just kind of like appease and get them fucking away from you. Type well, of you shit. know, he's, but he's also like collecting information as yes. this goes. And with that, he's like going to come to the realization that uh, they're going to, they're like, their father. They are going to do what they want to do. Regardless if I say yes or not. Right. So we need to put a kibosh on that shit. But so then uh, he continues on. Yep. Um, finds that the city gates are open to him. Yeah. When he gets there. So at least the Sand Snakes let people yep. know. Now this gate is weird. It's called the threefold gate or something like yes. that. So it's like three walls and the gates just go wide open. However, yes. if you weren't Prince Doran... You'd get through one gate, you'd have to go through a maze to get to the second one, and then go through another maze, and it's miles and miles long before you even get into the damn city. Right. And the city, it's, it's like, the way it's described to me, it's like the, the Water Gardens is Emerald City, and then the Sunspear, or wherever there is, that's like the old Oz, when it's dilapidated and falling apart. Right. And yeah. It's mud brown, and yeah. it smells of tar and wood, yeah. and it's... Well, it would be mud brown, right? Because most cert- it's almost certainly built out of adobe. Yeah, yeah. Because that's what they got. They got sand and fucking yeah. water. But it's like three three leagues away, and it's like two separate worlds. Yes. Yeah. Which so. is why you think one is like the, you know, like the, the nice villa that they go yeah. to on like the beaches of Monte Negro or something like that, so... Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, he arrives home... Mm-hmm. And uh, the third sand snake, third oldest sand snake, Tyene, mm-hmm. is waiting for him in the throne room. Which his daughter tells him she's there. Yes. His daughter's name is, I want to say it was Alisan, but that's not his daughter. His daughter's name is... Ariane. Ariane. Yeah, Ariane. I was close. You were close. Yep, his, his daughter, his princess Ariane. Mm-hmm. And so Tyene is waiting for him. She is blonde hair and blue eyed. Yep. But still has the same eyes yep. as still her father. Has serpent's eyes. Yes. And, and she's this cute little thing. She's like peppy and happy yeah, and quirky. Yeah. But she can kill you in an instant. She's like the cheerleader. Yeah. girl sand snake. Yeah, absolutely. Which is Look funny. what I made for you, uncle. Yeah, I did Don't this. Don't touch it. She may kill you with it. I did this cross stitch for you. Yeah. Like. I yeah. love her. She's my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. Um, I, it's it's my sister. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because and 
anyone who doesn't know my family, I have, like, I have a million sisters, and we all have brown hair and brown eyes, except for one who has blonde hair and blue eyes, and she could kill any one of us if she wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> and might contemplate it from time to time. Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> Not that she would, but she's stronger than all of us, and she could kick ass. So, yeah, uh, she doesn't really want to do an invasion. What she wants to do is just get the army ready because she thinks that they're going to be... Yes. She thinks that that's the Tyrell and the Lannisters' next move, is to come down to Dorne. When, in reality, I think if Ty, Ty, Tywin... Tywin. I, I'm so many T's, I'm getting them screwed up right <laughs> now. If Tywin were still alive, because he died at the end of the last yes. book, I do not believe he would have invaded Dorne. I believe he would have ignored everything until he heard... What Dorne was going to do? Yeah, uh, yeah. I don't think he would have done anything with Dorne until they decided to actually crown Marcella. Yes. Then he would have no choice yes. but to do something. Yes. With him being gone, it's a completely different story now. Yeah. And I think it but is actually. They I don't think know that yet. As far as right, Dorne know knows, only yet. the Red Viper is dead, and he's been dead for a long time. Right. Because of how word travels. Right. And at this point. Tywin is also dead, and they just don't know that Correct. yet. Correct. They do not know. Of course, I think with him being dead, the chances of Dorne being invaded, I think, are higher. Really? I think they're, like, not nil. Because Tywin was smart. Right, and who's in charge now? Cersei? Cersei. She's Queen Regent. Right, but what's she going to do the, to Dorne? Invade it. Why? Try to get Marcella back. Okay, that's a valid point. I forgot for a second. <laughs> to get her daughter back, who she yep. didn't want going there as a hostage to begin with. Right. But this daughter has the same idea. Marry Marcella to... What's the boy's name? Sir with a T. Tristan? Yeah, Tristan. Yes. Another T name I can't remember. Yes. Yep, to his son Tristan. Yep. And then she would be the queen. Yep. Yep. And then they would have control over the queen. Yes. Because she'd be their hostage. Mm -hmm. Clear as day. Yep. She's like, let me, let me plan it. You know, I'll give them emeralds and white gold. And they'll look so pretty because they're so young. Yep. And then we'll keep her captive. Yep. And again, she gets the, I'll think about it, routine yep. from Well, Dorn. it's been a long day. His gout's acting up because yep. he was bouncing all day. So he sends her on her way. Yep. Sends Ariane on yep. her way. But... But he has to have a little conversation with Ario Hota before the night's over. Well, I had a quick question. Okay. About the the sand snake. She went to touch him, and the maester stepped in and said, don't touch him. Or the cap captain and the guard stopped her, and she, like, skittered back and left, and the maester checked to see if he had any cuts on his hands. Did they really think she was going to kill him right there? I think that that's a possibility they might think that. Well, she did say she knew what poison that um, the Red Viper used on the, mm -hmm. on the mountain. And she's waiting to hear him screaming in pain because he's going to die a long, slow death. Mm -hmm. Which is true. He is dying a long, slow death. Yes, so. he is. She just wants him to do it in Dorne. Yeah. But yeah, so... Yeah, Doran is not very trusting of Oberyn's children. Or Doran is more trusting than his guards are right. about them. Yes. So we'll see. Right, because, for instance, if you think about it, Doran does not share the plans of the Sand Snakes, right? He's not into the whole, let's marry Marcella to Tristan and take this, like, offensive against the realm. Right. Whereas his children, like Arianne, do kind of have that same desire right? as the Sand Snakes. Again, because they're younger, more rash, instead of older and seasoned, like right. he is. Right, he's playing the long game, whereas right. they want immediate results. So it Entitled would no it would behoove the Sand Snakes to get rid of Doran because they're much closer to his children mm -hmm. and could probably more easily manipulate them. And I think that's what he's afraid of. Yes, or at least his guards and the Maester are more scared of. Right, and I think that in a way they have a right to be. Maybe they should be. Like I don't think it's going to come to that, but. But there's more sand snakes than there are in Doran. There are more sand snakes. There are seven or eight. Yep, so that's where we get to the conversation with Ario Hota after yep. the after Tyene leaves. Yep. Where he says, We need to protect the sand snakes from themselves and protect the people from them from from getting all riled up. 
Yes. So let's go ahead and bring them in. We'll put them under guard so that they don't get hurt. So. Um, and he says, even the little ones, because there's like two or three that are under the age of five. Yep. So they're going to be brought in as well. Yep. Because and, and only so that people don't try to use them against their will. Yes. That's the only reason. You mean against want... me. Right. <laughs> um, and then. They the, do mention that. Uh, what about the one in Old Town, Sabella? Or Sorella. not Sorella. Yep. So what about Sorella? In old, she doesn't say in old town. What about Sorella? And he goes, well, she's not in Dorne. She's if she were to come back to Dorne, that's fine. But she's out but playing for her now, games. Let her play her games. Yeah. So that I think we can take as almost certain that she is most likely Alaris the Sphinx in old town. Yes. Yes. Which begs because the question. two of the three sisters did mention how much. One of their younger sisters loves Old Town. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, most likely that would be Sorella, mm -hmm. which is Arellis spelled backwards. Yes. So, interesting. Alaris? Alaris. Yeah, Alaris the Sphinx. So, that's kind of like confirmation. Yeah. That she would be the same person. So, what the fuck do you think she's doing there? Learning. You think it's just learning? No, I don't think it's just learning, but I think she is learning while she's there. Well, obviously she's learning, yeah. right? She's already made three chain links. Yeah. So she's obviously getting knowledge. Yeah. I th I think it has something to do with the guy that killed the main th guy in the prologue. So you think she has something to do with the faceless men? I think she's looking for them. Looking for the faceless men? Yeah. To hire them? No. To kill them? No. To learn from them? I I think she wants to learn from them. Okay. So she gets close. So she gets in at the Citadel. But then how does she know that, like, this guy is going to, like, show... Because, like, like, she's been there for I months. I don't know. I, th I really think that she's there to learn from the Citadel, but at the same time, she's on another mission. And it's something that Dorn doesn't approve of, which is why he calls it a game. Okay. A mission from her pops set in motion yes. before he went and died? Yes. Because she probably would have gotten there. It mentions months. So yes. she probably would have left Dorne roughly the same time he left to go to King's Landing. Yes. So that must be her mission. It's something to do with the Citadel. Yes. Whether it be specifically the Citadel or with the High Towers or something. Something in Old Town. Yes. Maybe some piece of knowledge. Maybe, maybe um, Prince Oberyn wanted a glass candle. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. But... Wanted her to learn magic because maybe right. you know he had he had heard the stories of the dragons being reborn, which would bring magic back into the world. Maybe he wanted her to go learn magic. The only f thing I know that I believe for sure is that she is there on behest of her father, mm -hmm. and she's learning at the Citadel while she's also doing whatever he asked her to do. Right, which could be learning at the Citadel, or could be something completely yes. different. Yes. Yeah, she could be trying to steal something, for all we know. A key, maybe? Well, no, that was that was Pate. <laughs> I know that was Pate. That was Pate. <laughs> That's pretty much the end of the chapter. Yeah. Walking up the kiddos. I don't like that, though. Well, you don't have to, but I know. it's just the way it is. But I hate the last sentence, though. What's that? What's the specific last sentence you hate? Specifically? Yeah, well, yeah, if you hate it specifically... <sighs> I only pray Lord Tyron hears them in King's Landing so he might know what a loyal friend he has in Sunspear. Do you think he's being truthful? No. Do you think that this guy whose sister was murdered by Tywin's men... No, I don't. ...would be But loyal? when I first read it, I was so pissed because I was like, he is doing everything he can not to fight by locking up the girls... Mm-hmm. And letting Lord Tywood know that, see, I'm keeping them from attacking you. I'm a good boy. Don't kill me. Right. Was the first thing I understood when I read it. Okay. But talking with you and reading it again and talking about how he's playing the long game. Yep. Um, it makes more sense that he's trying to pretend he's as feeble as he looks. Right. Let Even us if, hope that Tywin assumes he has a good, loyal friend in Dorne. Yes. And doesn't get an inkling of what we really fucking want to do to him. Right. Yeah. Which doesn't matter anymore because unbeknownst to Dorne at the moment, He's dead. Tywin's fucking gone. Yeah. So. All right. 
good chapter. I, I, I love Dorn. I like getting into the storyline of Dorn. Yeah. It's so good. We do need a title for this chapter. What do you think? What do you have in mind, Septa? The only thing that came to mind was it's not the captain's chapter. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. What about you? Well, I wanted to call it a Christmas carol because of the visiting of the three spirit. I mean, the three sand snakes instead of the three spirits. That's funny. <laughs> no, no. Uh, I mean, if we had done this around Christmas time, absolutely. Right. No, it just didn't work out that way. No, it didn't work out that way. Uh, do you have any other ideas? So my other thought was the viper's fangs. His children. Mm-hmm. I like that. His weapons. I like that. The viper's fangs. I like that. Septo, what's our next chapter? Cersei. Our first Cersei chapter ever. Mm-hmm. Yay for us. You get to get into the mind of crazy, psychotic Cersei. It's going to be fantastic. <sighs> At least it'll be better than Sansa chapters. I hope so. You hope. I hope. <laughs> Cersei is demented. That's great. Her chapters are, at the very least, entertaining. Well, that's good. So, we'll get into that. Uh, let's thank everybody for listening. Yes, thank you guys. Thank you, patrons. You guys are fucking awesome. Yep. Um, let's see. If you want to support the show, patreon.com slash ironwood. Uh, for everything else, how to contact us, all that good shit, head on over to our website, iceandfirepod.com. We release episodes every Tuesday and Wednesday. Uh, Tuesday, or Tuesday and Thursday. Yep, my bad. And uh, we would super appreciate if everybody would go over to our YouTube channel and just give us a subscribe. Yep. We be super grateful. We're releasing all the chapters on the YouTube. Yes, we are. In video form. So we would appreciate a subscribe over there. just helps YouTube actually like us and show people our stuff and helps us grow. So yes. we appreciate that. Uh, and so we catch you guys again on Friday in Cersei. Goodbye. Bye.